I'm Chris from CBM Motorsports. I'm coming to you today to give you some insight on how we do our wiring harnesses, how they're installed, the proper connectors you're going to need to use to install your standalone engine harness and computer on your engine or on, on ours. What we do is we have the highest quality harnesses made in America with all new connectors and we use the highest quality parts to make sure that your engine package is going to work reliably for years. What we have here is several different computer system packages. We have everything from the early LS motors all the way to the latest LS7s, LSAs, LS9s. I can go on for a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from here and I'm going to try to explain to you how to put this harness on the engine correctly and how you're going to want to do it and hopefully answer a lot of your technical questions on the proper installation of the harness. We'll get, uh, we'll get going and I will, uh, I'll show you on an engine how we're going to install this harness. We'll see you soon. Hi, this is Chris again from CBM Motorsports. This engine here is a, is a display engine I'm going to be using to install an engine harness correctly, answer some of your technical questions that I've seen people ask, and kind of give you a brief overview of what we have here. This engine here is, is similar to an LS3 engine. Obviously it has our hot rod package on the front for, you know, hot rods. It could be an airboat, sand rail. To, to answer some of your questions on the engine here, basically you're going to have eight coil packs. You have four on one side, four on the other. You have the throttle body. Your mass airflow sensor would be mounted to your throttle body, as well as your MAP sensor here is going to be either mounted, you see them mounted here on the front side of the intake manifold on some engines. Some engines you have them on the back side of the engine here. Down on the side of the engine, behind where the starter would be located, you're going to find your crank sensor. There's two different kinds of crank sensors you may have. One, a 24X reluctor, or two, a 58X reluctor. The 58 is going to be noted by a gray connector. The black one is going to be your 24X. I'll explain more later on all of that. Some LS engines, the LS ones primarily, some of the cast iron engines, truck engines, are going to have your cam sensors going to be located in the back behind the intake manifold. In the front on an LS3 below the water pump, you would have the cam sensor, which would be located under the water pump on the timing cover on an LS2, LS3, 6.2, and so on. The back side is going to be your cam sensor on an LS1 over here. I'll go through all those descriptions as well. The side of the motor over here on your passenger side or your driver's side head is going to be your coolant sensor. That's going to monitor and let the engine know how hot the engine is to apply different cooling tables as well as cooling fan. And, and adjust the fuel map according to fuel temperature. Each one of the wires are, are located here. I'm going to go through a brief description real quick on how to install the coil harness because I see this happen a lot. People will get in there and get different brackets, different coils, and the coil harness is some question, you know, I get a lot of questions on this. Basically what we're going to do here is we have a general coil harness. They may have a little different connector depending on the coil you have. But all of the colors that go on here are all going to be the same in the same setup for every coil setup. The main thing you want to look for is when you put your hand on the right coil, you're going to want to have the pink, red, black, and black wire. This is going to go into here. And basically by installing the connector here, you know that the pink's going to pink and red. You're going to have pink and green, pink and blue, and then pink and purple. By putting these in this order here, you're going to make sure that the motor is going to have the correct firing order for the wiring harness so the engine is going to fire on the proper cylinder at the correct time. Now if you look at the other side, on the driver's side head, this head is the same setup, but on your right hand, this is going to be pink and red, pink and green, pink and blue, pink and purple. It's basically the opposite of what you have on this head to this head where you could take this coil pack and remove it. 
What I commonly see is people taking and they'll make them the same. They'll put the pink and red on the front, pink and green, pink and blue, pink and purple, and what happens is when you try to fire your engine, you end up with a popping, banging, misfire, out of time engine. So this, this simple little test, by looking at these and making sure these are in the right order, is going to ensure that you're going to have a proper fired engine. This is Chris. I'm going to go through the common sensors you're going to find on your LS based engine. First what we're going to do is here is I'm going to start with the knock sensor because that's where we were showing you on the other engine. This would be based underneath the intake manifold and then you'd have this coming out the back side of the intake. This is going to find a plug that's going to adapt and go to our engine harness. These are what the LS engine knock sensors look like. Basically clipped and made it underneath your intake manifold. Most LS3s, LS2s, LS7 engines, you're going to find a knock sensor like this. This knock sensors are typically one on each side of the engine, based near the oil pan on the side of the block. Okay, now we're on to crank sensors. These are the two typical crank sensors you'll find on an LS engine. The black one is for a 24 extra electro wheel. The gray one is going to be for a 58 extra electro wheel. These are typically on a factory engine would be based behind the starter on the side of the block. As well as you have the cam sensor which is mounted on the front timing cover of an LS2, LS7 engine. If you find this sensor on the front timing cover it's typically mated to a 58X but as well it could be a 24X. On an LS1 engine, LS, you know, 6 liter, 5.3 cast iron motor, you're going to find a sensor like this mounted in the engine below the intake manifold in the back of the engine. And you'll find this connector. This is a cam sensor commonly used with the 24X. You will not find this sensor typically with the 58X sensor. Just wanted to bring this small harness out so people, people have questions about this. When you buy a GM crate motor, you find a motor at the, at the wrecking yard or wherever you happen to find the engine, Typically, you'll find a harness like this. These are typically mounted to the front timing cover to allow ease of installation for the factory. So this would be mounted something like this with the harness. If you're installing one of our harnesses, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to remove this bracket from the engine. What I want to do here is I want to give you a brief description of each coil. These are the typical five coil packs that you will find on an LS engine. So let me go through them briefly and explain to you what, what each one is. This one here, you'll find it's flat on the back. It has a long gated connector here and it's pretty much a solid base piece. These coils you will typically find on LS2s, LS3s, sometimes an LS7, but it's, it's a very good coil but you're going to need to know what kind of coil you have here when you let us know what engine package you want to do so we can program the computer correctly because each coil has a different dwell base. This is one you'll typically find on a late model truck or on an LS7. This is a very good coil as well as this one here is called a D580. This coil is typically found on LS1s from uh, 97 all the way up to like 2004 GTOs. This is a common coil used on the LS1. We primarily will use this coil on any boosted application motor because this is probably one of the best coils that GM has out there. This coil here with the metal fins on the top, round circular body, this coil is typically used on early trucks. They use this in the early days of the LS motors. This coil as well was used on the early trucks. Uh, you'd find them on some 8.1 Avalanche engines. Uh, you'd find them on some 8.1 truck engines, some of the big blocks, as well as some of the LS-based engine. These two coils are not typically that common, but we need to kind of know which coil you have so we can set up your tune file so that it's going to run to the best of the engine's ability. Right now I'm going to explain to you the MAP sensors that are basically used on an LS motor. 
We have the most common one used on LS1. You'll see these used primarily on LS1s, but occasionally on some of the early LS2s, as well as some of the early LS7s. This is one of the most common map sensors that you'll find from, uh, from GM. You'll notice it has a blue stripe. Typically the part number is going to end in a 460. This is another one. It's a square bodied map sensor. These are um, typically have a brown stripe on them. These are a two bar map sensor. This allows you to go into boosted applications to adjust the tune for boost. You'll find a sensor that looks very similar to that in black. This sensor here is going to be typically located on a truck intake manifold on the top of the manifold. It's going to work almost exactly the same as these. These two are sisters, just different packaging. This map sensor here, we primarily use this map sensor in a three bar application where we're going to go to anything over 15 pounds of boost and you would find something like this on your engine. This map sensor here with the bolt, this is made by, uh, by Bosch for AC Delco. This, can, this one here has, a, has an O-ring seal and a little bit different connector here. This is used on some of the LS3 and LS7 engine packages that you have and is typically located right behind the throttle body as well as this one here. These two sensors here are very similar, but they're different in scaling. So if you have this sensor, you're probably going to want to pick up one of the blue ones from us to make sure that your engine tune is going to be correct for your engine. Okay, I wanted to go over uh, some injector clips so you can have some idea what kind of injector is on your engine. This, this injector here is has a small probably one of the smallest clips that is used on, on the LS-based engine. This is called a truck connector, or we typically will see these on some of the Ecotechs. It's the smallest connector. You'll typically see these on the tall truck intake manifolds. The next injector is an LS1 injector. This is going to have a square connector, and it's going to have a metal clip on the outside here that's going to allow you to connect in and connect out. This is also typically used as called a Bosch connector. The next one here is an injector you typically find on an LS2. You'll also find this clip on a late model truck. You'll find it on an LS7, an LS3. This is what GM has primarily converted everything over from the old style clips to the new. And this clip is typically referred to as a USA connector. It's a very good solid connector, has a good clip and lock. Okay, what we're going to go over now is throttle bodies and throttle body sensors. Basically, we have here is a round circular sensor with a round connector clip. This, connect, this sensor here is your throttle position sensor. Basically, it's going to let the engine know where the throttle position is to adjust your fuel, as well as the IAC connector. The idle air control sensor basically steps in and steps out and controls your stall, your recovery rate, makes it easy for a cold start. But this, this sensor allows extra airflow to come through the throttle body and allows the engine to hold RPM. What we have here is a LS1 throttle body. This throttle body is used on most common LS applications. There are several different ones. We have billet ones. We have big mouth throttle bodies. We have, you know, different applications for different stuff. But as you see, the throttle position sensor and the IAC are both located on the side of the throttle body and they would come on the engine. If you have a larger throttle body, they're typically always mounted in the same location. Other than that, you may end up having an electric throttle body on your engine. And what this is, is this has a basically side plug that goes on and it's electrically controlled by electric throttle pedal. That electric throttle pedal is going to open and shut the throttle body as necessary to allow airflow. And the engine does basically everything that these sensors here do, the IAC and the TPS, a throttle cable and everything, right off the computer brain. You're going to have typically 
several different kinds of throttle pedals. This is one of the common ones we use on, one, on a lot of the later model engines. It's a very good pedal, very robust, and has very little difficulties in, uh, in mounting and in setting up in your car. As well as you could have an older style throttle pedal. And you'll notice that the throttle pins typically have nine pins in here, and the early ones have a, or the later model ones have a six pin plug. Okay, I have here some of the common sensors that people have questions about because they're not sure what they do or where they go. This sensor is typically in the side of the oil pan. It's an oil level sensor. Uh, most, you know, standalone engine packages, hot rod packages, this is not typically used because this sensor is typically used by the body control module, not the engine controller. Basically lets the driver know if they have a, a low oil level situation. This one's going to be mounted in the driver's side head. This is the coolant sensor and this allows the engine to know what the coolant temperature is so it can turn the fans on and adjust fuel. This sensor here is the intake air temperature sensor. This sensor is going to either be mounted in the intake manifold, in the intake tube, it may be zip tied to the fuel rail. It's basically letting the engine know what ambient air temperature is to help adjust for cold starts and also for hot days. This sensor here is the oil pressure sending unit for the computer system. This will be mounted in the back of the engine typically or in an oil port and allows the engine to get the oil pressure so it can adjust and, and shut the engine down if there's loss of oil pressure. Also allows for aftermarket gauges as well. Okay, on some engine packages that you're going to need, we're going to run mass airflow sensors. What these are, is these are sensors that take the airflow in, they come out the other side, they measure the airflow coming into the engine, and actually modify the fuel table to make the engine run its very best. These are the two sensors you'll find most common. You'll find the round one like this with the screen, or you'll find the small one here that's a cartridge style. It's typically best if you mount this sensor in line with at least six inches of straight tubing to get the correct airflow through the sensor. These are a little less critical, and these straighten the air as the air comes through. But these are two sensors that would topically, typically be used on the air tube coming into the engine monitoring the airflow. And this will only be used on certain applications and we'll let you know at the time of purchase what sensor you're going to need if one at all. These sensors here are, are O2 sensors. Basically what they measure is they measure the air fuel that's coming out of the exhaust system. These are going to be mounted in your exhaust and they're going to be critical to what O2 sensors, to what computer system you have. We'll let you know when you order the engine controller that we make sure you have the right one. One of the easiest ways to tell is on the sensors, you're going to have two different style connectors. They're going to be black or they're going to be gray. And this is going to help determine what sensor is going to be right for your application. Not all computer systems are going to run the O2 sensors. But if it is necessary, it's a big part of how the engine's going to run right for you.